Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to uh, continue uh, essentially uh, uh, on, on talk uh, by uh, uh, excellent talk by Mohan uh, on uh, exploring quantum effects in photosynthetic complexes. Uh, in particular, I'm going to, in this talk, dis discuss uh, how uh, an interplay between quantum coherence and uh, environmental fluctuations can lead to optimal and robust energy transfer within uh, light harvesting complexes. This work is done in collaboration with Ayur Reza Shabani, Seth Lloyd, and Hirsch Rabbits. So one of the major challenges uh, that we are facing today uh, in designing efficient solar cells and also uh, sensors is to, to be able to manipulate and control excitation energy transport in disordered materials. And this is a, especially a major obstacle uh, to design uh, materials with long diffusion lengths. Uh, typically, the diffusion lengths in disordered materials uh, are about 10 nanometer. And so uh, this has led to serious complications in designing uh, photovoltaic uh, cells. Uh, to create this kind of a mixed blend of uh, donor and acceptors and uh, to have a, like an average distance of about 10 nanometer. So that the exciton, which is the electron hole created after uh, light is being absorbed uh, by a, a molecule uh, to, uh, to, to uh, transfer to a, like an electron acceptor and uh, charge separation uh, happens. So this is a, a major problem because collecting this electron through these uh, percolating networks are very inefficient. So if we had methods to enhance exciting diffusion lens, we could actually uh, go back to simpler design structure for photovoltaic cells, like a bilayer structure, and consider an electron donor with uh, um, uh, enough uh, volume to, to absorb uh, light and uh, being able to transfer all this excitation to an electron acceptor. And so we are not dealing with this complication of electron collection. But this has been done in nature for a long time, you know. So you can consider uh, this um, photosynthesis, which is the source of light, uh, energy in, in, on Earth, uh, as a major R&D, uh, nanotechnology R&D operations for four billion years. And so it's assumed usually that the output of this uh, operation should be uh, uh, pretty efficient. But the question is that, is that really the case? Uh, and uh, in order to explore this uh, hypothesis, uh, we should uh, probably test one prototype. So. Um, in this talk, I'm going to concentrate on Fano Matthiolson protein complex in green sulfur bacteria, which uh, Mohan talked uh, in detail about it. Uh, so I'm going to skip lots of uh, uh, more introductory uh, concepts and going to a more uh, technical details of how the energy transport happens, what are the in, uh, in environmental interactions, and uh, addressing the question, is this uh, 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 protein complex is uh, optimal and robust with respect to variation in these parameters, both internal and external parameters. And also, uh, one more important question is that how likely to, 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 to end up in this particular geometry? Is there anything particular about the, these chromophoric complexes that make them so efficient? Or they're just a trivial, um, uh, you know, random structure that, uh, are operating because of certain time scale separation. I'm going to discuss this in detail. So uh, green sulfur bacteria um, lives at the bottom of ponds and uh, ocean. Uh, and in the conditions that are virtually no lights, uh, they, they can capture one photon every hour or so. And there's, so you assume that they should be pretty efficient. And uh, this fundamental also awesome protein is connecting uh, antenna of uh, this uh, bacteria to reaction center. Essentially, it's like a channel guiding the energy um, 
getting the energy from this antenna complex to reaction center. And, um, but you have to note that, uh, as Mohan talked uh, earlier, um, there are many different varieties of these light harvesting complexes. And they, they, they have different geometries. For example, this is the light harvesting complex of uh, purple, back, uh, uh, purple bacteria. And you see that the, uh, these systems uh, um, have uh, symm a certain symmetry. Uh, the light absorbed by these light harvesting complexes uh, two, and uh, being transferred to LH1. And then the reaction center is uh, here that uh, the energy is uh, stored in a, a biochemical uh, form energy. Uh, and uh, as you probably all know, uh, in the last few years, there have been uh, a variety of uh, experimental demonstration of existence of quantum coherence in this uh, light harvesting complexes. Uh, this has started by uh, at Grand Fleming group uh, on uh, FMO protein and uh, purple bacteria, conjugated polymer by Greg Scholes group, uh, Ian Mercer, uh, using a different technique that to the electronic spectroscopy, and more recently also by Greg Scholes uh, uh, at room temperature for marine algae, and uh, again on FMO uh, uh, by Greg Engel group uh, uh, at room temperature. They observe uh, oscillating beating of uh, cross uh, in a 2D electronic spectroscopy that demonstrates uh, uh, co quantum coherence in uh, excitonic bases for uh, these uh, light harvesting complexes. So one might ask uh, uh, why quantum coherence could even exist in, at this kind of warm and uh, wet environment. Uh, this was typically uh, considered, you know, most of physicists dismissed any potential role of coherence because of simple argument like that, that this is just too hot, too wet, just cannot happen. Uh, and uh, beyond explaining that, we have to explain it, you know, or address this question of, is there any role for quantum dynamical effects? Is there, uh, um, this is the focus of my talk, is that is there like any interplay with the environment that actually is important here, not the merely coherent effects? And, and um, this is the, uh, I'm, I'm going to discuss and tell you that uh, we believe that there is actually a, a very uh, uh, helpful collaboration between environment and uh, quantum coherence that leads to optimization of these photosynthetic complexes. But um, other more interesting question is that, are that like these quantum effects uh, could be there uh, and uh, help the energy transfer efficiency of the FMO protein, for example. But do they have any evolutionary role? Do they, you know, have a, like a biological impact at the higher level? Uh, we don't know that. Uh, and uh, can we make new predictions by including these quantum effects that it are not possible using? Uh, just simple classical uh, uh, dynamics for uh, excitation transport, and also applications for designing artificial excitonic devices for a variety of uh, different purposes of absorption, transport, storage, and sensing. So um, as Mohan mentioned, uh, one of the first uh, ideas that came out of the Greg Engel uh, paper in 2007 was that uh, there, there are certain form of quantum computation uh, are happening in, in this uh, uh, finite material some protein. Uh, it was uh, speculated that there is a connection with Grover search algorithm or uh, quantum walks. Uh, we explored these possibilities. Uh, uh, we immediately noticed that uh, there is no, uh, there is not nothing, anything too close to a Grover search algorithm in these systems. Essentially, if you evolve the free Hamiltonian of this finite some protein, the energy, uh, the overlap of uh, excitation energy uh, state with the trapping side is never uh, exceed like 40%. But uh, if this was supposed to be a, something close to a, uh, like a continuous time evolution of, a, uh, of the form of a grower, you should expect that at certain time you have a major uh, overlap with the target side. Uh, uh, which is the, the, the essentially the, the state you are searching for. But that's not the case here, at least not in the context of a unitary evolution of it. And also the connection with quantum works, as uh, Mohan mentioned, and uh, this is the work done by Stefan and uh, in Brigitte Willis, Willis group, 
that uh, there is not any speed up in the context of quantum box. So it's, it is, there is no, that's not the right measure to look at the potential uh, contribution of quantum interference effects. So it doesn't matter for this system how fast they get, like the excitation gets to reaction center. It's like, it's matter, uh, it, that's not really leads to efficiency of these devices, as I discussed. But um, I think still the quantum vac picture is a good picture because you can think about, uh, uh, just look at these dendrimers uh, that uh, these are artificial system that you can, uh, multi-branching uh, polymers uh, that uh, they have like a similarity with this kind of binary tree structure as well as studied in quantum information uh, science. And uh, in this binary tree structure, you can write a diffusion equation describing the classical random walk of hopping, uh, for example, the yeah, excitation can hop uh, uh, toward the root of this uh, binary tree. And this transition matrix is described by the connectivity of this graph. You can, in um, analogy, define uh, like a continuous some quantum work. Just uh, this is you can write this for any quantum system uh, in which the Hilbert space have a spatial structure. So you can con talk about continuous some quantum work. Essentially, what it means that the uh, elements of uh, Hamiltonian in, in in the Hilbert space that they have a, a spatial structure uh, denote your transition matrix, and this is like a quantum work of uh, probability amplitude. But uh, these systems are really interacting with the environment. So the continuous time quantum works are not good descriptions. And essentially, uh, it's not clear you, you have to have a good measure of what, how to actually quantify if, if, uh, if there is a quantum work and uh, how, how does it uh, contribute to the dynamics. In order to do that, let's just go one a step back, just look at uh, the FMO complex. As you seen earlier in Mohan's talk, that um, these are like connecting this uh, antenna uh, chromosome to reaction center. That this is like a trimer consi consists of three monomer, uh, and um, there is a protein scaffold. And uh, in, in in the there are seven bacterial chlorophyll that are actually doing this um, energy transfer. Uh, they're operating as an energy transfer channel. Um, there are two different bases that uh, is discussed in this uh, community. There is a side base which denotes the spatial coordinate of bacterial chlorophyll, and uh, there is the exciton base, which is the basis that diagonalize the free Hamiltonian of this system. Essentially, what it means that these states are uh, delocalized over uh, ex extended. Uh, a special uh, structure over multi-chromophores, at least two or more. And uh, the, uh, using 2D electronic spectroscopy, these this pathways have been studied. Uh, there are two main pathways of excitation starting at site one or six. These are close to antenna. And, so, and they end up at site three and four, which are close to reaction center. And, um, but in order to really explore this, uh, you need to start from uh, like a more formal uh, mathematical uh, uh, formalism. Uh, and uh, this is a Frankel exciton Hamiltonian. Uh, this is um, uh, that you can write for any multi-chromophoric system. Uh, this denotes that site energy is at site M. And this is creation annihilation operator uh, of an excitation at that particular site. Uh, this VMN uh, denote the coupling between two chromophores. And this system interacts with the thermal phonon bath and radiation field in general. Uh, to a good accuracy, you can ignore off-diagonal uh, couplings and consider only site fluctuations due to interaction with the phonon bath. And uh, radiation field can uh, lead to a transition between different, excit uh, and, uh, multiple, um, different excitation manifold. Uh, and um, in order to study these systems, you have to um, write essentially the unitary evolution of uh, the entire system, taking trace over environmental degrees of uh, freedom. Then you end up with the like, so-called master equations. This is um, a very uh, well-known uh, form of studying the system is to, to express the time variation of the density operator, uh, which contains our knowledge about the system, uh, as uh, different uh, operations. These are uh, 
this denotes the unitary evolution of system under the influence of free Hamiltonian. This is Lamb shift, which is uh, essentially related to reorganization energy of this uh, system. And uh, these are the due to uh, non-unitary evolution due to interaction with the phonon bus and radiation field. And uh, this is uh, related to how much decoherence you have. Uh, this is uh, essentially a decoherence rate, these coefficients. And these operators are just nothing but uh, uh, other product of uh, a projection, essentially, you can uh, consider to exciton bases uh, or a jump between different excitation, excitation bases. And this decoherence rate is uh, just free transform of bass correlation function and can be expressed uh, linearly uh, as a, a spectral density and uh, in this relation which n is uh, bosonic distribution function at temperature t. It's, uh, you can consider uh, ohmic spectral density and which with a cutoff frequency and uh, the spectral density becomes uh, uh, linearly related to reorganization energy. So uh, we studied this system um, using a quantum trajectory picture. And uh, you, you, you can arrive, uh, if you do the math, you arrive at this equation. What it means, this is a non-unitary damping evolution because this Hamiltonian is uh, non-Hermitian. So this is uh, like a damping evolution. And these are the jump uh, in a fixed excitation manifold between different sides. And this is very important. I want to emphasize this, that this is essentially what I'm talking about uh, in, in the bone markov approximation as uh, interplay between quantum coherence and environment. Because as you might remember, um, in the Hamiltonian itself, uh, these jumps are not really, uh, the, the, the thermophonon bath does not lead to any jumps between different sides, just fluctuating each side energy. So it's not uh, contributing to the transport itself. But if you look at these terms, these, these are relate, this actually creates jump between different sides. And they, they happen to be there because of environmental interaction uh, and free Hamiltonian. So if you do not have the coherent coupling between these things, the phonon bus interaction doesn't lead to that jump. These terms create jumps between different excitation manifolds. These are separated. Uh, by more than a thousand wave number, and the time scale of these jumps are on the order of one nanosecond compared to energy transfer time of one picosecond. So you can ignore this, these jumps uh, uh, in this uh, description and just simulate these uh, first two terms. And this is more uh, detailed uh, expression for this uh, non-Hermitian term of decoherence. And you can understand this as a quantum work in level space. And uh, writing this transition matrix in this form as a function of uh, this non-Hermitian Hamiltonian and, and this quantum jumps. So it's possible to understand this in a context of quantum work, but it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, that, that, that's just an interpretation of the dynamics uh, you need to have a, like a measure to, to quantify uh, uh, the, the performance of these uh, photosynthetic complexes. So what we used was to, to look at uh, the success probability of the excitation being trapped at the uh, target site with different rate kg. And uh, this is, uh, this we you know, define this as the energy transfer efficiency, which is uh, generally less than one because uh, Due to interaction with the environment, you, we can also have the loss of excitation due to electron hole recombination. So what we did was to uh, explore this energy transfer efficiency as we in, uh, looked at the different uh, numbers for uh, reorganization energy. And so this, this just denotes the interaction of the system with the environment. It's the more the, the larger the organization energy, the, uh, you have a more, much a stronger in the environment. And you see that energy transfer efficiency enhances by 15 or uh, about 30 percent from like uh, in this particular initialization from 70 percent to 99 percent if you enhance the reorganization energy. So here, 
environment is actually helping you, uh, in this case, uh, to have a larger efficiency. Of course, because this is a perturbative uh, method, you cannot really go and explore reorganization energy larger than uh, about 30 wave number, because the site uh, energies are about 300 wave number. So this is like about one-tenth, so perturbative approximation is still valid. But there is no way to explore beyond that. And we want to, to see if there, this is really an optimal point. But in this model, we couldn't do it, uh, because the just model would collapse. And uh, you see that the transfer uh, time of the excitation to the reaction center reduces by uh, one order of magnitude, uh, which is related to energy transfer efficiency definition. And it doesn't uh, contain any more um, information. So uh, in order to see how this uh, energy transfer, uh, uh, what are the mechanism for uh, environment-assisted transport, uh, yeah, it's better to look at these two different uh, scenario. It's either you have funneling, which the interaction with the environment in, in this exciton basis, helping you to, to relax to the ground state, which is close to uh, the energy at site three. But also it helps you, this is a uh, uh, phenomenal, like a uh, tunneling in uh, quantum mechanical effects that helps you to overcome a potential barrier by in, essentially in, increasing the spectral density overlap between two chromophores. We also studied um, a binary tree structure in a like pure dephasing model. This is like a, uh, having considering just white noise, uh, which is killing the off-diagonal element of density operator. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, in presence of disorder, without the noise, the energy transfer efficiency drops significantly, but uh, with noise, it, it, it has an enhanced efficiency for this uh, structure as well. We use this uh, purely phasing model for FMO. The reason we did that is that in this thing, you can uh, explore all variety of the environmental strengths of, in this pure phasing model. And so we, we finally observed this optimal energy transport uh, in this model, although this is not an adequate model to describe the environment in this system. But this was good enough for us to demonstrate that uh, there is a just enough, there is a certain amount of environmental interaction that could be just the right one. So if it's, it's not there, the quantum, uh, there is a destructive quantum interference effects leading to localization, which is like uh, Anderson localization for large system. But uh, at very high decoherence limit, you have this quantum Zeno effect, which is uh, you, the efficiency is dropped to essentially to zero. But there is an optimal regime here. And the, the estimated value for FMO is just sitting uh, in that optimal regime. But still, you know, this wasn't convincing because the model is not uh, describing the actual non-perturbative, non-Markovian uh, bass of these uh, photosynthetic complexes. The reason is that this is a very interesting uh, 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 feature of this light harvesting complex is that the, the, the magnitude of the diagonal, off-diagonal, and system bass interaction, essentially the trapping, everything sits uh, close to 100 wave number. So the time and scale of these things are very similar. And that makes it very hard to study this system. So this is the major challenge to simulate this system efficiently uh, because uh, uh, it, most of the techniques that develop to study this complex open quantum systems are, do not work here. And, uh, but there are more fundamental questions. Is this like, uh, you can ask why, why there should be this kind of, why these uh, photosynthetic complexes operate at this regime that there is a, this convergence of time scale? Uh, is this uh, have anything to do with the optimality of this system or the robustness of uh, these complexes? And uh, what is the likelihood of just being at that regime? And so in order to address this question, you really have to d develop more uh, advanced techniques to simulate. This is really a tough uh, uh, area to work with. It's like essentially sailing in a really stormy condition. Uh, environment has uh, lots of uh, unusual characteristics. It has memory, and it, 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 uh, so it can uh, uh, interact with the system and uh, put like uh, essentially giving back some of the coherences that already you know, uh, absorbed. 
And so um, formally, you can rewrite the evolution of the system as this propagator. This is uh, an interaction picture. And this is like a super operator due to system bass interaction. And this just denotes the time ordering. So because of non-Markovian effects, you have to keep track of the time ordering. And there is a famous theorem uh, that says that this multi-order uh, correlation function, if this is expanding this exponential function, you, have, you deal with this higher order uh, correlation, bass correlation function, and you can write this as a different uh, combination of two order correlation function. Th this is true only for bosonic basses uh, with Gaussian properties, which, which is good because the, uh, both phononic and photonic uh, environment for this system have that feature. And so if you, like, uh, schematically, if you do the mass, like, you end up with a master equation. This is, um, there are many different methods, actually, I should mention here, that to study this, uh, it's known as hierarchy equation approach to study the system in this realistic environment. And this is uh, uh, developed originally by Kobo Tanimaro and recently completed by Ishizaki Fleming. And there is also the other technique uh, known by Polaron transformation, time local master equation by Zhang. But uh, here, uh, I'm going to uh, explore an uh, interesting feature of the pioneering work of Jian Shako at, uh, about 13 years ago on uh, essentially an approximate techniques to simulate this system. Uh, we have a different derivation of this uh, master equation, which uh, leads, uh, allows you to estimate how much error you have by uh, uh, using a simpler model. Essentially, you end up with a pair of coupled master equation, uh, which is uh, the contributing terms due to coherent evolution, recombination, and trapping. And this is like a schematically uh, demonstrating bass response operator. And um, mathematically, you can express it in this form. This is our uh, non-unitary evolution due to loss and trapping. And this is like a response of the bass uh, with the system. This is like a, in context of quantum computing, we, we, we know this as like an error operator on, in acting on the system. I, I have that kind of background, so this is the way I look at it. So considering, although we know that this is not doing a comp quantum computation in that sense, but there is a quantum interference effect that happens which is uh, leading to an optimal regime due to interaction with the environment. So it's, it's not helping in the transferring like a first passage time as uh, Stefan and Mohan showed. But it, it helps to, to have a higher energy transfer efficiency. But here we want to study this in this kind of uh, more uh, appropriate model to describe the, the system at, in the actual setting they are operating in the biological environment. So, and here the action of this environment, the memory effects can be represented by this. This is just nothing but the just action of these errors. You can consider the errors acting on the density operator in interaction picture weighted by bass correlation function. And uh, this is um, a bit more technical. Um, I apologize for general audience, but this is, uh, I want to talk uh, in detail to say what, what are the complications of really simulating this system. And so that's a bass correlation function, have this imaginary uh, real part. And uh, there are two uh, different spectral density that you can use that are uh, related to this re reorganization energy through a Lorentzian function or exponential decay. So in order to uh, study uh, this system, so th the, the whole point was that if we wanted to study this optimality of this system, we had to simulate the system for over a wide range of parameters. And using a hierarchy equation approach, which is the, the general benchmark for simulating the system, uh, you have to solve 50,000 differential equations uh, to, to, uh, for FMO complex at uh, uh, reasonable temperature to simulate this. This is what is done by Ishizaki Fleming at USC Berkeley and uh, published uh, last year, showing a coherent oscillation of excitation uh, uh, up to time a scale of uh, close to 400, 600 femtosecond. Uh, which is relevant, the time scale of trapping is one picosecond. So this is the time scale uh, of the, this system. So we using, using only this pair of the uh, uh, coupled differential equation, we, we actually can reproduce these results with, within good accuracy. And seeing these oscillations, uh, but this is much faster uh, simulation. In, and uh, this allows us to uh, 
explore a whole variety of the parameter range for this system. This shows uh, uh, energy transfer efficiency as a function of uh, bus cutoff frequency and reorganization energy. So this axis is the, the strength of environment. And here is the non-Markovian effect. So this is the inverse of this bus cutoff frequency is the uh, uh, coherence of the, um, uh, the coherence time scale of the environment. So the, here, the, uh, this can be measured, used as a quantifier for non-Markovianity of this system. And so the closer you are here, it's more non-Markov. You see that um, this, these are the estimated value for final material some protein that are sitting at a really optimal point, which is pretty robust with variation in either of these two parameters. And you see that for very large reorganization energy, energy transfer efficiency drops significantly uh, uh, when it's non-Markovian. But uh, in the sh uh, reasonable reorganization energy as close to natural setting uh, for final material some protein, it's, uh, this non-Markovian effect is essentially helping a bit. Uh, but the system is robust with this kind of non-Markovian effect. Uh, you can explore the robustness by uh, measuring the second order derivative and seeing that it has really a flat structure. And um, this shows this, this is a, like a lateral point of these plots showing this optimal uh, environment as a transport at this reorganization energy of the uh, uh, close to 20 wave number. And uh, so we studied this system as a, in various temperatures as well. And uh, you see that this is actually very intuitive. It, at the very, uh, very large reorganization energy, so a very strong environment and at very high temperature, you expect that energy transfer efficiency drops. And that's what happens. But at the values of uh, environment for FMO and uh, room temperature, it's sitting at the optimal robust point again. And, uh, so this is a, a, a significant point, you know, that uh, it, it, it seems that um, the parameter of this uh, environmental uh, 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 invo um, uh, reorganization and memory and temperature and uh, all these uh, relevant parameters to be just at the right regime for the FMO. But uh, one um, caveat in using energy transfer efficiency to quantify this system is the the fact that this hasn't been measured experimentally and we estimated about one picosecond time scale based on that uh, special separation. And uh, so we consider this as a free parameter to explore energy transfer efficiency. This is uh, inter very interesting because you see at this regime, if the trapping is much faster, this is like a one picosecond. And so if the tr uh, trapping is very slow, the excitation just sitting there at, until it dissipate, dissipate to environment. And that makes sense. But here, you see that even if the trapping is very fast, also uh, you expect that the you know, energy transfer efficiency becomes more efficient, but it's not the case. It, it becomes less efficient. So there is an optimal regime here. That doesn't uh, uh, make sense at the beginning, but you know, I, I can give you a classical example. Suppose uh, there is a gas chamber and someone is sentenced to death, like sitting in that, like, you know, this is, and there's like a, the, the gas act within time scale of a minute, and there is a revolving door that uh, uh, rotates in a uh, reasonable time scale. If this time scale is very slow, like or, on the order of hours for one rotation, it doesn't really matter if the door is actually rotating. It's very unlikely that the person can escape from the gas chamber. But uh, if the door is, uh, Rotating at the right uh, um, um, speed, you know, on the order of like a 30 second or something, it's very likely that the person can escape. But if the door is rotating really fast, like you know, uh, 30 rotation in a second, there is no way that it's very unlikely that the person can escape. Uh, so it's like this is the case, you know, it's like Zeno effect. It's just observing it too much, you know as the, the excitation cannot move, essentially localized, and just dissipates the environment. Um, but uh, there are other things that are not very well understood, so we consider it a, a bit as a free parameter, is that the location of trapping is also it's, um, assumed to be the reaction center close to site three and four, but that's not really known for sure. Uh, uh, we consider this like uh, to uh, simulate this system based on different trapping sites just rotating essentially this FMO within that geometry. 
And observe, first of all, we observe this environment assisted transport, no matter where the reaction is. But uh, it's interesting that the, uh, it happens that the site three and four, which are uh, believed to be close to reaction center, are actually provides the most optimal energy transfer efficiency. Um, and also, there is like a whole uh, deal, um, discussion about the role of initial states, uh, that if the, the, there is a coherent initial states or incoherent because the, the solar um, uh, light is not coherent, the experiments done with coherent state of light, of lasers and things like that. So we, we just consider, um, uh, to consider uh, the, the effect of initial states, just randomly sampling over 10,000 different initial uh, states. Uh, considering all different coherence, fully classical mixture of uh, statistical mixture of states, and uh, considering worst case and best case scenario, you see that at really large reorganization energy, when the environment is very strong, there is a huge dependence on initial states. So the system is not robust. But it happens that exactly at the value of the reorganization energy of 35 web number 4 FMO, this is very small dependence to initial stage, uh, initial um, states about like a few percent uh, in changes in efficiency, which was surprising. Um, also, the effect of correlation in the band. So uh, there have been a lot of discussion is that the band, essentially this protein scaffold uh, is uh, like uh, oscillating uh, in, in a fashion uh, uh, that creates correlated fluctuation and that helps the, uh, to, uh, this, um, to this uh, uh, complex to operate efficiently. You see here that, that the regime of large reorganization energy, this is the case, and uh, the uh, correlation uh, of in the bands defined here in this bass correlation function by this exponential function, this is the distance between two sites, N and M, and this is a correlation lens and uh, showing an exponential decay based on the separation between two chromophores. You see that um, if you have like a higher uh, correlation, you have a better efficiency. But at the regime that FMO is actually operating, it doesn't really much matter. So this is also robust to correlation in environmental fluctuations. But more, uh, one of the things uh, after studying this system in this all uh, parameter regime, uh, there was uh, one thing that bothered me uh, in particular, and um, and our, our, and my colleagues, and that. Uh, maybe this is not a big deal. Maybe this is just everything we see is that there is a convergence of time scale about one picosecond for like the strengths of Hamiltonian, system Hamiltonian, free Hamiltonian, uh, and system bass Hamiltonian trapping. But there is a major three order of magnitude time scale separation between everything that we know with the, the, with the loss, dissipation, which is one nanosecond. And so it doesn't matter how actually you go there. It's just your excitation has so lo long lifetime that moves around enough to be trapped. And so it's not a big deal. Any structure, so this, based on this uh, argument, you expect that any structure um, pretty much gives you a very good efficiency uh, within that uh, parameter regime. And uh, so we, we consider this uh, like a, Explore this over uh, seven chromophores in random orientation, interacting through dipole-dipole interaction, with the distances being bounded between five to 50 angstrom. The Doppler approximation is valid, and uh, uh, sampling over 100,000 different random configurations. What we observed was that, and using these uh, known parameters for FMO and uh, environment, which is 35 wave number 50. Web number for uh, uh, bass correlation uh, time scale and trapping one picosecond and loss one nanosecond. You see that essentially 60% of the, these random configurations uh, they're like less than 10% efficient, and the the, the ones that are over 50% efficient are like 10% of them, and just are only 1% uh, efficient as like more than 95%. And close to FMO, it's like one in a thousand configuration can be that efficient. So um, this is shows that uh, this uh, geometry is kind of rare, but it's not that rare that it's, so it's kind of, you know, there are, one person is actually not that bad as well. It, it, it shows that there is certain robustness 
to, to this variation. So it's not like, you know, uh, because if it was one in a million, you expect a small changes in, 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 uh, in a structure of FMO significantly, catastrophically uh, reduce the energy transfer efficiency. So that, that's not good for a, like a system that operates in, um, in, uh, uh, in a um, wide drive, essentially, in an environment which is completely uncontrolled. So uh, after this study, we showed, um, uh, using a variety of different techniques, that uh, FMO dynamics, we could actually simulate this in intermediate and uh, non-Markovian and non-perturbative regimes. Um, yeah, I should, I should mention that the, the model, this approximated model that we developed based on Gian Shokov work, is that uh, we uh, quantified the errors, and uh, the errors really blow up in the regime of really high, strong uh, uh, reorganization and, uh, and uh, really uh, low uh, uh, Basque frequency cutoff. So these are really only appropriate models for intermediate regime. But it happens that uh, we are lucky here, and the, uh, the biologically relevant regime is the intermediate. So we showed uh, um, uh, environment-assisted quantum transport in a variety of settings, and always the parameters re uh, relied uh, was uh, in the area that was pretty robust. And also, we explored that a structure, uh, the ro role of geometry of finite also in protein, and see that this is a rare geometry. Now, the, the, the questions that everybody is interested now uh, are uh, how we can actually use this quantum coherence of effects to engineer uh, novel materials uh, that outperform classical uh, operating. Uh, devices for sensing and uh, light harvesting, uh, artificial light harvesting complexes for um, and in context of photovoltaic cells uh, and uh, other potential devices uh, that you know could emerge uh, that we cannot even think about today. And uh, so there, are, um, the, this is the. Um, I would like to acknowledge the sponsors. Uh, financial funding from NSEC and DARPA and INI. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Yes. Can you come to speak? I have a technical question. So for the non-Markovian case, you use um, this method by Gao, and you compare it for, um, with the Ijiki, the full hierarchical resolution. Uh, you got good agreement. Is this uh, across the temperature range, or is it just at higher temperature? Because at low temperature, you, you start having so many equations, it becomes almost impossible to solve. Uh, so actually, yeah, it's, it's not easy to simulate the low temperature using hierarchy right. approach. Because the, so I did not mention this explicitly. So the, the problem with hierarchy equation approach is, is uh, that uh, the, the complexity of simulation with a uh, growth factorial, it's worse than exponential, with respect to high reorganization energy, low to, uh, um, essentially fast frequency cutoff when it's very highly uh, uh, non-Markov, uh, and at the regime of low temperature, uh, and also with the size of system. It just, this is grows uh, exponentially at, at best, and so uh, it's just not possible to explore this at very low temperature. So you compared so, at high temperature, I think. Uh, yeah, that, I high temperature, okay. which was like, you know, the the most relevant temperature for this system as well. Sure. Like they're Thank not really operating at low temperature. Anyway. Thank you. Thanks. Any other question? Yes? On the temperature. Yeah. On on the temperature scale, I mean how, how sensitive is it to temperature? So um you mean uh, how sensitive is? Uh, so this is the plot with respect to temperature. So it depends on the reorganization energy. That's the reason we use 3D plots. Because if you fix the reorganization, 
you observe something for that particular value, it doesn't mean much about the different reorganization energy. So first of all, I should tell you that the, the really this model beyond this kind of reorganization energy is collapsing. So you have to do uh, like a brute force hierarchy equation approach. So we, we cannot say much about really large reorganization energy, but this is the border that you can um, explore this uh, using this efficient simulation method. And uh, it, sh it shows that it, it's in, uh, so in, in at, if you increase the temperature, the energy transfer efficiency drops significantly at the, for large reorganization energy. But the whole point is that for uh, this kind of, uh, around you know, uh, between zero to uh, up to even 100 reorganization energy, it shows that it's, that it's system a, a kind of robust with respect to temperature. And so this is what we observe using even a Limblad master equation, or like more Mark, more Markov technique, but uh, so uh, it, it's, it's interesting that for this reorganization energy, it looks like that the it's robust with respect to variation in temperature. Uh, so it's not, you see, that based on this definition of energy transfer efficiency, but you know, we have to be careful about that too. It depends what you really look for, uh, you know, what, what is the actual you know, function that you are considering as a measure of the efficiency. But I think this is uh, what we used actually widely being used by other groups. Uh, that was originally was used by Klaus Schulten uh, in a kind of a context of uh, uh, energy transfer efficiency of these complexes in uh, using a diffusion mass equation though. Uh, but uh, so, it, and also being used by other system, people in quantum information science to to uh, quantify the energy transfer, uh, like uh, transport efficiency in binary tree structures by Eddie Farris group. So it's not like uh, that. It's just more our definitions. Other people using it, and it looks that it, it just so that the the big. You know, if I want to summarize the talk in one line, that saying what what is significant here is that. It appears, so there was a conjecture by Engel Fleming in their 2007 paper that there is a constructive quantum interference happens to be important to have this efficiency of the system. But although they speculated about search or other things that you know, might not be relevant in, in, in a context of quantum computing, but I think that that conjecture was right in the sense that quantum can, Interference effects are relevant, but in, in a sense that when you consider environmental interaction, there is a really optimal regime that both quantum coherence and uh, 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 environmental interaction help to, to uh, uh, essentially collaborating to uh, have these high efficiencies. And um, it's not correct to look at that in the context of first passage time, as Mohan mentioned. Uh, in, that's not the, the, the right picture. It, it does not provide a speed up, but it, it looks that within that definition it's very robust with temperature too. Okay.